right, today we move on to one verse straight two. This is the end of the chapter. There's a lot of stuff in this. Did you guys did you guys look at Jupiter? Anyway, I put on um, there that uh, both quizzes are going to be 60 points. I thought that's what you guys want. Jeez. Well, there's a lot of questions. In fact, it's probably going to be at least half, half an hour, the quiz. Why? What's, what's so hard? Yeah, yeah. Draw graphs, draw triangles. Come on. Okay, so whatever we learned yesterday, that was kind of like a review of last year. But now we're going to learn tougher stuff here. So I'm going to do problems. So now we're going to solve equations involving trigonometric inverse trig functions. So, hmm. Okay, I will do a problem like 1A. So the directions are solve for x. Okay, so I just put the 2 on the other side then. Be the same problem. Uh, wait, do we need Oh yeah, we got a problem like that there. So, what did I say? I'm going to put the 2 on the other side. Now, of course, if you have a calculator, how do you solve any equation on your calculator? You make one side zero, you graph it, and then wherever it crosses the x-axis, right? Yes. Anyway, before we even start this problem, how many answers should there be? One. Think of the graphs. You know how to, what does this graph look like? You know, this is just like something, I mean, you don't have to do this all the time, but what does sine inverse look like? So this is pi, this is one and negative one. Doesn't sine inverse look like this? Yeah. And doesn't cosine inverse look like that? Yeah. So they only have one point of intersection, so we should expect only one answer then, right? Yeah. Right, because it's like, where does this graph intersect that graph, right? Anyway, so that's one thing you can think of, because we're going to get more than one answer now. Okay, so when you have equations with inverse trig functions in them, you can do the same thing to both sides of the equation, just like you learned in algebra one. You can square both sides, you can square root both sides, you can natural log both sides, you can e both sides. But what do you think we're going to do? We're either going to sine, cosine, or tangent both sides. So you've got two choices, the two best choices would be either sine both sides, because sine of sine inverse x is just x, right? That's what you guys learned from the homework, right? Or you could cosine both sides, but there's a 2 here, so then you would have to use the double angle identity. But it, it'll still come out, except you just get a harder equation. Or if you want to take the ultimate challenge, tangent both sides. I wouldn't recommend it, but... So what do you guys want to do, sine both sides or cosine? Pick one. Sine. Okay, so we're going to sign both sides. Okay, and sign of sine inverse x is just x, so that's good. But how do we do this? You guys did this on last night's homework, except you had numbers there, but you have x's, you do the same thing. Remember, this is an angle. So you've got sine of 2, think of this as theta. Sine 2 theta, so you've got to use identity. So how do you do that? What do you do? You draw the triangle, just like last night's homework. How do you draw an angle that's cosine inverse x? Think of that as x over 1. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, right? And then you use the Pythagorean theorem. So how do you find the sine of 2 times that angle? Again, you've got to use identity. 2 sine theta cosine theta. So you look at your picture that you drew, what is sine of theta? Opposite over hypotenuse, so it's this. And what is cosine theta? Adjacent over hypotenuse. And there you go, now you got an algebra equation, should be no problem, right? <laughs> so what should I do? Cancel the x from both sides? No, you lose solutions when you cancel. So what you should do is you should make one side zero. Factor out the x. Okay, so either x equals zero or this equals zero, which means 
2 root 1 minus x squared equal 1, right? Okay, how do I solve that equation? How do I get rid of the radical? Square both sides. So you get 4, 1 minus x squared equal 1. 4 minus 4x squared equal 1. 4, no, 3 equal 4x squared. x squared equal 3 fourths. So x equals uh, plus or minus root 3 over 2. So there's three answers here. Yeah, but Mr. Park, the only had one because when we drew the graphs, right? Yeah, see, since in inverse trig functions have restricted ranges, you always have to check your answer. Now, some of you think, well, I have to square both sides here, so I've got to check. Yeah, you do, but it doesn't matter. Even if you don't square both sides, you have to check. That's because these have restricted ranges. So here are your three answers. Zero, root 3 over 2. This is what I would like for you to do. Write them all, box them, and then cross out the ones that don't work. So what you have to do is take each of these and plug it back into the original. Okay, if I plug in 0 into the original, what do you get? Sine inverse 0 is... Zero, thank you. That's the easiest one. Is equal to two times cosine inverse zero. What is cosine inverse zero? No, that's cosine of zero. What's cosine inverse of zero? Which means the cosine of what angle is zero? But you gotta be in the range. Pi over two. Pi over two. Is that true? Is zero equal to pi? No. No. So we cross that out. Okay, now we plug in root three over two. Sine inverse root 3 over 2. Come on, this is last night's homework. Pi over 3 equals 2 times, and then plug in root 3 over 2 here. So what is cosine inverse root 3 over 2? Pi over 6. Is that true? Yes. Yeah, so that's your answer, and then you know there's only one solution, but let's just, because some of you are not going to be able to draw the graph or even think about it, yeah? Okay, plug in this one. Sine inverse negative root 3 over 2. Negative pi over 3. Negative pi over 3. And then what is cosine inverse negative root 3 over 2? 5 pi over 6. Is that true? How can a negative number equal a positive number? So we've got to cross that one out. So the only answer is root 3 over 2. So does everybody understand? You have to check no matter what. I don't like this. Okay, I want to do a problem like B, except well, let's, let's make it harder then. This, so it's going to be like G then. Okay, solve for x. x equals 10 inverse 2 plus 10 inverse 3. No, 5 plus 10 inverse 8. So what do you think I should do? Cosine both sides, sine both sides, or tangent both sides? Tangent. Yeah, tangent. If there's tan inverse in there, come, you know why you tangent both sides? Because tangent of tan inverse gorilla is just gorilla. Okay, but should I tangent both sides now? Do you guys know the identity for tangent gorilla plus banana plus armadillo? No. Well, you could group them together like this is gorilla and that's banana. Or we could just move one of them on the left. Then both sides only have two. Okay, which one do you, it doesn't matter. Which one do you want to move on the left then? Okay, so x minus 10 inverse 8 is equal to 10 inverse 2 plus 10 inverse 5. Now tangent both sides, so tangent. Now I'm going to show you all the steps, but you guys can skip steps if you want, you know. After a while, you, you can just see it. And don't you dare distribute the tangent now, because we've got to use identities here. So how do you compute the tangent of gorilla minus banana? Tangent of the first minus tangent of the second. Can you guys do that one in your head? What is tangent of tan inverse 8? 8 all over 1 plus tangent of the first times tangent of the second, right? 
Do the same thing on the other side. Tangent of the first two plus tangent of the second all over one minus tangent of the first times tangent of the second. Do not distribute. You have to use identities. And then now, can you solve for tangent x? I, yeah, I hope so. Okay, so what shall we do? Simplify this? This is 7 over negative 9. So how do you solve an equation like this? Cross multiply. Cross multiply. So negative 9 times this. So negative 9 tangent x plus 72 equals 7 times this. 7 plus 56 tangent x. So add 9 there. So we get 65 tangent x is equal to negative 65. Wait, so that, that doesn't sound right to me. It should come out positive 1. We did something wrong. Where did, where did, where did we make it's, the error? It's just positive. positive. It's just Which one? Positive 65. Which one is positive? 65. Oh yeah, so we moved it on this side. Hello. So tangent x equal 1. Okay, that's the easy part. Because you just got to do algebra. Now the thinking. Remember, this was the original equation. These are angle measurements now. If I add up these three angles, what angle do you get? Well, I don't know, but I know the tangent of it is 1. So what do you think the answer is? Well, I'll tell you what a lot of people think it is. It's pi over 4, yeah? But no, it's impossible because this angle all by itself is bigger than 45 degrees, it's, right? How do you draw an angle that's tan inverse 2? You just make sure opposite over adjacent is 2 to 1, right? See, that's 1. You just go 1, 2, like that. That angle is bigger than 45 degrees. So how can the answer be 45 degrees, then, if this angle all by itself is bigger than that? It can't be. So it's not pi over 4. So what's the next candidate? Tangent of what angle is 1? What? Going to the third question. So this can't be it. Could it be 5 pi over 4? No. Well, let's draw. So how do you, this, this angle is tan inverse 2, right? How would you draw an angle that's tan inverse 3? You go 3 to 1 ratio, right? So here, 1, angle 1, 2, 3. And it's pretty good. Wouldn't that angle be tan inverse 3 then? Because opposite over adjacent is 3 over 1. And then how do you draw an angle that's tan inverse 8? Oh, why am I doing 3? It's five. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. So it's five to one ratio. And the last one is ten inverse eight. So one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Pretty close. Okay, so what happens if I add these three angles up? Mr. Park, I still can't tell. So what you, you know what we do? We stack the angles on top of each other. Take this angle here and just stack it up over here. Like over here. Here's one, and then go one, two, three, four, five. See? That angle, just do the same thing. One to five ratio. Except turn it. And then take this angle and put it over here. Stack them up. So one, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So here's the right angle. So now you can see, if I add all the three angles up, does that look like 5 pi over 4? Yeah. Yeah. That's the answer. So you know what I tell my math team to do when you get a problem like this? Draw the picture first. So draw this picture, and then, ooh, that looks like 5 pi over 4. Put that on the answer line, and then verify it by taking the tangent of both sides. Because tangent of 5 pi over 4 is 1, right? Yeah. Okay. So, well, compared to this one, B is going to be really easy. Okay, so I'm just going to go down this list. So the first group of problems, you just got to solve equations. I believe you're going to get two of those on the quiz. I wrote it this morning, that's why. So you're going to get two of them. Okay, the next one. Write 3 cosine x plus 4 sine x as a single cosine function. Okay, a similar. Write 
Okay, let's just do some different numbers here. How about 5 and 12? 5 cosine x plus 12 sine x as a single cosine function. As a, as a cosine function. Did we do this in the last test? Yeah. What did we use last test? The magic number. I thought we could I can I thought we could purge it, Mr. Park. Don't be ridiculous. This is super important in engineering. A lot of you are probably gonna major in engineering, yeah? Well you guys don't like driving trains? Driving trains are pretty fun. Yeah. Okay, do you guys remember how to get the magic number? When you add a sine and a cosine function with the same period, you will get another sine or cosine function, except the amplitude gets bigger. The magic number is that amplitude. Anybody? Square root of A squared plus B squared, come on. 13, Pythagorean triple again, right? 25 plus 144 is 169. Square root that, you get 30. Now what did we do with the magic number? You factor it out. Okay, so if I factor out the magic number, you get this. Okay, but see, last chapter, these numbers came out to numbers you're supposed to know for sine and cosine, like root 3 over 2 and 1 half. Okay, well now it doesn't, but you can still do it. Okay, so to change this to a cosine function, we need cosine, cosine, sine, sine, correct? Okay, so I need to change this to cosine of some angle. See, when it's root 3 over 2 or 1 half or root 2 over 2, it's easy to get the angle, yeah? But now, the cosine of what angle will give you 5 thirteenths? Well, draw the triangle. The cosine of this angle has to be 5 thirteenths. So therefore, this would be 12, right? That's the angle right there. Isn't the cosine of this angle 5 over 13? Yes. That's the angle I want. Okay, so what is that angle? Well, you can, you, you got six choices. You can go cosine inverse 5 thirteenths. You can go sine inverse, here, let's write them down. You can go cosine inverse 5 thirteenths. You can go sine inverse 12 thirteenths. You can go tan inverse 12 fifths, right? Opposite over adjacent. Or you can go secant inverse 13 fifths. Cosecant inverse 13 twelfths or cotan inverse 5 twelfths. All of these represent that same angle right there. Which one you want to use? It doesn't matter. Pick one. How many of you do computer programming? One person. So what language do you program computers in? Python a little bit. Okay, I have no idea. The only language I know is basic. Does anybody even do basic anymore? You never even heard of it. <laughs> Anyway, when I programmed computers, the only inverse trig function there was on there was tan inverse. So I like to use that one. So tan inverse 12 fits. But it doesn't matter. You guys understand? All of these represent that same angle right there. Whatever this angle is. Here, let me see what it is. Somebody check me on the calculator. Let's see. That's 2.4. But I know that 10 inverse 2 is about 63 degrees, so it will be a little bit more. About 60, 66 degrees. You guys have an iPad there. <laughs> Just compute 10, in, compute 10 inverse 12 fits. I got yeah, that's radians, that's why. Oh, yeah. So now, okay, multiply it by 180 over pi to get degrees. Oh, I was off by one degree. That's not bad, though. In fact, this is a game you can play. Just shout out a number, 10 inverse something, and then, then, then just try to guess what the angle is. Here, I'll show you how to do it. We play this at Thanksgiving at our house. 10 inverse. Give me any number. Three. Three. Okay, well, I know that. That's about 72 degrees. Well, because I know that 10 inverse 2, 10 inverse 3. Give me, a, like, a weird number. 79. 79. Okay. Well, that means you got to draw a triangle 79 and 1. 
So that angle got to be like 89 point something degrees, right? It's almost 90 degrees, I would say. Anybody checking on this? Yeah. What? Yeah, I'm not going to even bother with the other class. 89.2. See? There you go. No, all you got to do is think. This is like slope, right? Opposite over adjacent is slope. If the slope of the line is 79 degrees, that means it's like almost vertical, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, gotta, so that angle got to be like almost 90 degrees, right? Okay, anyway, forget that. <laughs> okay, so that's the angle. So cosine of this is that. Cosine x plus, okay, now I need sine. Sine of what angle will give me 12 thirteenths? Well, this same angle here, right? Isn't the sine of this angle this? So you, whatever angle, whichever one of these six you choose, just put it here again. 12 fifths, sine x, boom. <laughs> and then you go, hey, you somebody. Cosine, cosine plus sine, sine. That is the identity for cosine of? Two is tangent. No, 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 no. Where did the two come from? Tan inverse all fits. Right? Like if you had pi over six, like the last test, you put pi over six here, right? So tan inverse all fits minus x. Okay, but since you guys have so difficult time graphing this, you know, like this thing, because we're still not all on board with this. Okay, I'm telling you, this is on the quiz. It's either going to be one, two, or three there. Okay, so since you guys still have a difficult time doing that, I'm not going to let you leave this as your final answer. So I want the x first. Okay, so can I just do this? Can I just switch these two? Tan inverse 12 fits? Yes. Yeah. How come? Even. Because cosine is an even function, so that's why you can't do that, right? Cosine of negative x equal cosine x. So yes, you can switch it just because cosine is an even function. Well, what if that was a sine? Can I just switch it? No, sine is an odd function. So you could switch it, but then you could put a negative in the front if it was sine. See, now you guys can understand, right? So if I want to graph the, this thing here, you just graph this instead. You just make the amplitude 13, and then you shift the graph 10 inverse 12 fits to the right. Okay, whatever. Anyway, this is on the quiz. Well, it's on the homework. So. And those of you in engineering, don't. I'm telling you, you go to college, whether you're going to take more math or not, well, I guess if you don't take more math, but if you're going to take more math or, or physics or things, all of this stuff in, on P, in PCH, I, it's going to help you. And if you're going to like go to law school, logic. I think I told you this when we studied logic. Logic. How many of you guys live in Hawaii, Kai? One person. Do you guys know who Stanley Chang is? Uh, sort of? No, council man. Council man. Yeah. Anyway, he went to Iolani. He went to Harvard. He was my student. And then I remember after he finished law school, he gave me an email and sent me an email that said, Oh, Mr. Park, thank you for teaching me logic because the LSAT is filled with logic. Well, that makes sense, right? If you're going to present a case in court, don't you have to be logical in your thinking? Okay, whatever. <laughs> okay, number three, let's just review problems there. Okay, number six. I'm going to set up number six for you. I'm not going to do it, though, because every year students go, I didn't know what to do. What? Well, it's in the video. Do you guys even watch the videos or you just look at the written solutions? There's written solutions. It's all in the Google Drive, people. Okay, let's set up this problem. Number six. So now, notice the asterisk there. The asterisk means you can use your calculator. Anyway, if you look at the answers on the bottom. So I'm going to tell you right now, number six is on the quiz. You just got to be able to repeat it with different numbers. I think you guys can do it. So number six, you have a poster that is three meters tall. So here's a poster. You put it on the wall, three meters tall directly in front of you. If the bottom of the poster is two meters above your eye level, so here, here's your eyeball, and you're looking at the poster. So, so here's the level. That's two meters then, right? 
The bottom of the poster is two meters above your eye level. Then it says, how far from the wall should you stand? So here's the wall. How far from the wall should you stand so that the viewing angle, now what is a viewing angle? Doesn't that make sense here? By the way, I was looking through your Algebra 2 book. This problem was in there. Did you guys do it last year? Teacher didn't assign it, huh? It doesn't matter. It's assigned now. This is called the viewing angle. See, from your eye to the bottom of the poster and then eye to the top of the poster. That's called your viewing angle. So there's an optimal distance that you should stand from the poster or like you're watching a movie. So the viewing angle will be large as possible. But then I'm thinking when you watch a movie, you don't want it to be as large as possible, right? Because if you stand really close to the screen, then your viewing angle is big, right? But then you've got to kind of look like this, right? So when you're watching a movie, maybe you don't want it. But when you're looking at a poster, see here, look, look at this poster. If I stand really close to the wall, look, the viewing angle is really small, yeah? But then when you walk away, the viewing angle gets bigger, but then there comes a point when the viewing angle is going to get smaller again. So how far should I stand from the wall so that the viewing angle will be as large as possible? Well, have we done problems like this before, where you have to find the maximum or the minimum? Yeah, so you have to write a function. You graph it on your calculator, and then there's going to be a maximum. Remember how to calculate that maximum? Menu. No, you guys know how to do it. I'm not going to do that. OK, so how do I write this angle as a function of x so I can graph it on my calculator? Well, what are we studying this chapter? Inverse. OK, let's, let's review. OK, look. If you have a right triangle, if this is 3 and 4 and 5, then what is this angle right there? Isn't that 10 inverse 3 fourths? Yes. OK. So would you agree that this angle here is simply this big angle minus that small angle? OK, what is this big angle? 10 inverse 5 over x, opposite over adjacent. What is the small angle there? 10 inverse opposite over adjacent, 2 over x. There's your function. All you got to do is punch this in, make sure you're in radian mode. Anytime you graph anything with trigonometry in it, you have to be in radian mode. So graph this on your calculator, and you should see a hump, and you guys should know how to calculate that maximum point, right? Mm -hmm. And then when you get that maximum point, make sure you answer the question. How far from the wall you should stand? So you're, you want to find x max, right? But then what if on the quiz I just change it up? What is the maximum viewing angle? Oh boy. Oh, you use the y value. Yeah, then it's going to be the y value because when you graph it on your calculator, isn't that y? So when you get this maximum point, a comma b, whatever it is, a would be the value of x, b would be the y value, which, is, which represents theta. Yeah? So this problem is on the quiz, I'm telling you it is. All I'm going to do is change, so like every year I just change all the length of the poster is 4, and this is 1. Is that going to bother you? I, I hope not. So that should be an easy problem. And you want me to tell you the other ones that are going to be on the quiz? Yes, please. That's shameless. OK, maybe I'll give you one then. Oh, uh, five. Uh, do I really want to tell you? OK, I will. 5A is on the quiz. I wrote it this morning, that's all I can remember. Number two is on the quiz, magic number. Uh, and number one, I'm just going to tell you, two of those will be on the quiz. There's going to be two of those. You have to either sign both sides, cosign both sides, or tangent both sides. Well, while we're at it, why don't I just tell you what's going to be from inverse trig one then? Why don't I just tell you the whole thing? Because this is the end of the chapter, you know. All right, number one. There's four graphs. Tell you. So there'll be four of them. So you've got to know the base graph, and then you've got to do stuff to it. 
And I already told you, one of them is going to be this. It's either 1 minus x, 2 minus x, and 3 minus x. At this point, come on, if, you, if we don't know how to do this already, just memorize already. Uh, in number three, there's going to be a whole bunch of those. There's going to be like eight of them. So you're going to have to, some of them you should know how to compute the value on your own. The other ones, you got to draw the triangle and use identities. And guarantee you're going to have some indifference identities, double angle and half angle. So there's a, there's a whole bunch of those. So just make sure you know the range now. Where did you, what quadrant to draw your triangle in? Because if you get the wrong sign, because you put it in the wrong quadrant, that's, that's kind of that's big now. So, yeah, that's it. So what you have to do is you've got to practice this question. Um, are the inverse functions, are they um, even and odd? Are they considered even? Well, you got to look at, okay, then give me one. Like cosine inverse. Okay, right? cosine inverse looks like this, right? <laughs> okay, an even function is symmetric about the y. y axis. Is that symmetric about the y axis? No, it's not even. Is it odd? Is it symmetric about the origin? No, so this one is neither. Cosine inverse is neither even or odd. But sine inverse. If you look at sine inverse, it looks like this, right? Pi over 2, negative pi over 2. It's odd because it's symmetric about the origin. So yeah, just look at the graph. And hey, did you see the final exam, Cruz? No. Because did the... Okay, on the final exam, there's like a... It says... it's. One of the questions is, which of the following functions are even? And then another problem, which of the following functions are odd? And there's a whole list of them. And then, who knows, maybe some of these might be on the list. <laughs> see, that's how I test to see if you know what the graph looks like without having you draw the graph. Anyway, we're not going to worry about the final. You want to know about the final exam? Okay, it covers everything we learned in the first semester. But I have a practice test on there. If you okay, this is what I did. I look at number one on the test and I write a problem just like you. I look at number two, I write a problem just like you. I look at number three, I write a problem just like you. So if you can do the don't study all your quizzes and your homework, just do the practice test. If you do if you can do the practice test on your own without any notes, then you'll be fine. There's a graphing calculator section in the beginning. Each problem, I think there's like nine, eight or nine of them, two points each. The rest of the problem, you've got 30 minutes. If you finish, if you finish ahead of time, you can go on to part two. Part two is no calculator. But after 30 minutes, you have to put your calculator away and then you can't use it for the rest of the test. Anyway, so the rest of the test, I think there's like 60 problems. There's gonna be one point each. All or nothing now. There's no partial credit. No. But it's easy. It's like, which of the following functions are even? Well, you just think of them in your head and you write down the letters like A, B, C, F, H. Whatever they are. So each problem is designed so that you can do it in one minute. So it's not going to be like a test question where it takes you a long time. You should be able to do it in one minute. But see, the heart. So the problems are not difficult. The thing is, you got to know everything we learned. That's that. Because do you guys even remember logic? No. Contrapositive? No. Modus ponens? No. <laughs> well, there we go. Do you even know which statements are logically equivalent to each other? No. Oh my god. <laughs> We're in trouble. <laughs> So, okay, remember Lin Quad then? You remember Euler's line? Yes. Not going to have that because that takes too long. You can't do that in one minute. <laughs> okay. You, you mean if I ask you to find Euler's line right now, you, you, you can do it? You can find the centroid, the ortho center, and the circle center? I don't think so. I don't think so. You can't do it in a minute. 
I might just ask you to write the equation in the line and tell me what the x-intercept is or something. Mm -hmm. Some, yeah. yeah. Or what about the distance between a point and a line? Remember we had a formula for that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, <laughs> well, that problem is on the, on the test. Well, you just got to memorize the formula, right? Anyway, look, if it's on the worksheet I give you, it's on the test because I told you. I just, I just made like a, a copy of it. Copy and paste, change the numbers. Change the sign to a cosine. All right, we are done today. So you guys gotta, this, this is not easy, you know. You gotta, you gotta work these problems out. You can already tell, right? You don't know your trig values and trig identities. Not good. Okay, so tomorrow then we go on to triangle trigonometry. That's the law of sine and the law of cosine. Remember that from last year? You got to use your calculator last year. So the second quiz we take, you're going to get to use your calculator for almost the entire